so obviously there's an enormous amount of material that you can potentially pull from. How do you go about navigating, selecting right. what to bring on next? Um, frankly, a lot of that is gut. <laughs> you know, we um, we do a lot of reading. Um, and we, besides the fact of the stuff we already know to ourselves and as the storyline starts to develop we start to pull certain villains and characters and storylines that we just happen to like um, we knew from the beginning early on that we always wanted to do like a Red Hood story for instance you know just because they always going to throw things like deep in the background and so we could then set forward and leap into like season two um, but the episode the season was really built around like the rise of the penguin anyway so we wanted any other like smaller stories we're going to bring up, not to kind of overshadow that, and to be like, you know, seeds that we could plant for next year. Going along with that, did you yep. feel a bit of pressure with that sort of tease introduction for the Joker? Because that's like the question. What, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, I mean, there's a lot of pressure to that, you know, um, because you know everyone's really going to read it as that and like look to it as that. Um, and if you mess it up in any way, shape, or form, then you've kind of like blown it and you have to kind of go back to square one. So, yeah, there was a, a huge amount of pressure and a huge amount of relief because, like, we watched and I was like, oh, I thought it actually, it really worked. So, and I hope so. So with, um, oh, yeah. you're saying Sorry. it's the rise of the Penguin in season one, yep. essentially, does that mean towards the end, towards the finale, it's going to be all Penguin all the way? There, you'll see some major Penguin moves by the finale. So certain things will happen that come to a head. Sort of dynamics that were set in motion in the first couple episodes will finally kind of like have their climax in a way. It will be dark and bloody. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And what else excites you about sort of upcoming episodes? Um, there's a great arc in it from episodes 19 to 21 that I really love. It's there where Gordon investigates this serial killer and it's, it impacts him in a really personal way that causes repercussions that will go all through next year that will be really kind of like damaging and exciting and I also think we get to see sides of um, a few of the major characters you know like um, Nygma, Selena, um, Gordon, Barbara that we have nobody has seen before you know that all of a sudden you see those characters take that kind of like a transcendental step forward you're going oh yeah I see you becoming the person you're going to become which is super exciting so one of the things I really like about the show is, is getting a chance to see some of the, like, the iconic imagery for certain characters, like Nygma with the coffee cup with the question mark on it. So yeah. when are we going to see the penguin with the monocle? <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. We, have, we haven't really talked about the monocle going back yet. The monocle, that's a, that's a tough one. That's a tough one to pull off. <laughs> Maybe one day. I mean, it is those things, like you watch those things, because some of them are more explicit, like the the question mark and the coffee cup. But if you go back and you watch the pilot, the way Thomas and Martha are shot and, and the way they're lying in Crime Alley, they're actually lying in the shape of a bat. So like all of those things that are like, all of those things, like we try to like plant a lot of that, both like kind of subliminally and explicitly so you can see those throughout the season. And we kind of challenge every director to kind of say, oh, see what, you know, things, things you can plant in the background there that then fans can kind of discover as Easter eggs as they, as they watch, so. Do you have sort of a... Uh laundry list of villains you'd like to maybe bring in going forward? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully beyond as well. You know, with a lot of those villains, we brought in a lot, we used a lot of villains in season one. I mean, we really kind of like, might have, you know, had too many perhaps, who knows, but we don't want to burn through too many villains because we want to kind of bring them in and develop them slowly for when they come in. Like, I would love to find a way to do like a Killer Croc story, you know, and I want to do, we're going to do a Hugo Strange story, obviously, at some point. We want to go back and revisit some of the characters that we've looked at before, like the Jonathan Cranes and what have you. Um, yeah, so there are, I, I would say we have like right now like a half dozen we're looking to bring out in the next year and a half or so that will come, come forward. So, I mean, there's some we're probably we're never going to see. You're never going to see Man Bat, you know, or, but. Why not? <laughs> it, it might break the reality of the world that we've established, but yeah. And then Fish Mooney is yep. like the most insanely brilliant like character and like the way Jada plays it is just mind blowing on a weekly basis, but then. You know, we, we, she's only on for this season. I know. So, uh, can we expect maybe some more female characters to kind of rise up and maybe get more materials, more complex stories that can be hopefully somewhere near as stimul- Maybe like Renee Montoya could get like more material going? The short answer is yes. I mean, I, I do. Jitty did an amazing job, and I do also feel like you want. You want that strong 
female character um, in in the world in the show. You know, I feel like um, when she's not in the show, you're going to feel that absence, and no one's going to be able to like take her place, obviously. But you want me? I mean, I don't know. It's a, again, like, the short answer is yes. There will be a new strong female um, character, not necessarily a villain, but a misunderstood character who tried to do something. Well, and also not to put you on the spot, but it's yeah. like it's a lot of white men on the show, and like they're great, they play mm-hmm. the characters great, right? But like you know, you remove her, and it's just no, no. Yeah, so that's why I. I that's something we think about. Okay. Yeah, it's totally something we think about. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, we don't really have that character yet. We're still kind of like fleshing out like who that character is going to be. But there are a few options we're toying with. But I can't really like specify. Sorry. It was late. It was, no, no, not at all. I don't know. It happened very late. You know, just, it was very much. We kind of left things open at the end as we were moving towards the finale. As we kind of like waited to see what she was going to want to do at the end of the season. So, yeah. Following up on what I asked, you know, you talked about man bad, but how will you willing? How, how far are you willing to push that reality? Or like, for example, another bit, like I just thought of somebody like a Mr. Freeze. Sure. He, he's sort of on. The, he's sort of sciency. You know, technically. Yeah. We will tell, We will absolutely see a Mr. Freeze. Yeah. You no. Know, yeah. Well, there's no doubt that Free Freeze is going to come up. I feel like with a lot of those characters, we're trying to find the line of where we can get to. You know, how far we can push that um, level of reality. Like we. Like there's an episode called Venom where people like take like a like a, a Venom pro, like a, a prototype, a Viper, like take a Venom prototype. Um, where like we tried to push that world to see how far we could go. Um, and I think there are versions of you can do of like Killer Croc where he doesn't have to look like a giant crocodile. Like if you read like you know. Their versions of Croc, like Brian Azzarello's like Joker, where he just looks like a huge guy with kind of like a skin condition. So there are ways you can take those characters and make them, you know, realistic and seem like they're in the world. Um, but it, it's a line we have to walk. Um, and there are things when we've we've done where you just pulled out of editing, just because you're like, oh, that's a step too far. Like in the Viper episode, like, oh, that's like breaking the reality that they're in. So. How did you go about develop, developing the uh, sort of ambiguous um, aesthetic where it's not really specifically said, right. like you know, what year is this? I mean, that was really Danny uh, Cannon, the, the, you know, who directed the pilot and set the look of the show and worked on all the sets and decided, like, what can, we can have and can't have. Um, like, you know, like, all the computers look like kind of circa 1985. Um, the cell phones, there's no smartphones, you know. What's the reason behind that? The reason was to dis- disengage it from any time. Because we, we knew we wanted to push the bounds of reality so that it can feel like a heightened world. Um, and so we didn't want it to feel like our world. We wanted it to feel like enough like our world. So, like, oh, yeah, I believe these characters are real, they're tethered in reality. I believe that if this coffee cup falls off the table, if, even if I'm not watching, it's going to hit the ground. But I don't want it to be so real that I'm not going to believe that there are characters who can, you know, jump off buildings and survive or what have you. So it, it, it was decided to create like another reality that's close enough to ours, but not the same thing. 